And now to tonight's big story, and it's one that many of you really do care about, graffiti. We're following up on the case of a man police call a prolific vandal, accused of causing nearly $20,000 in damage across Portland. That suspect, Emile Laurent, is a professional skateboarder now facing several felonies. Investigative reporter Kyle Boshi got his hands on a 28-page search warrant showing how investigators first cracked this case. A prolific graffiti vandal was caught red-handed, literally. A search warrant obtained by KGW says Emil Laurent had fresh red paint on his hands after being stopped by police on February 23rd. Eyewitnesses had spotted the Portland man and two other people spray-painting the Oregon Leather Company in Old Town around midnight. The others escaped, but Laurent was arrested. According to police, he had paint all over his face, shirt, and pants. The 22-year-old is accused of vandalizing dozens of buildings, walls, and signs over the past two years. Prosecutors say Laurent tagged public and private property with Tendo, thought to be shorthand for Nintendo. In April, police searched his home. Court records show they recovered spray paint cans along with practice pads and paper with a Tendo tag. Police later released a photo of heavy markers found during the search. On Wednesday, Laurent appeared in court with his lawyer and pleaded not guilty to 25 counts of criminal mischief. We met him outside. Mr. Laurent, I'm Kyle Bosch with KGW Channel 8. Any response to the charges you're facing? No, we don't have no. any comment at this time. Thank you. What would motivate someone to tag buildings? I don't think we have any comment at this time. Thank you very yeah. much. Laurent is a professional skateboarder who's sponsored and heavily promoted by the apparel firm Polar Skate. The Swedish company did not respond to our request for comment about their team member's arrest on felony charges. City leaders hope to crack down on the graffiti and vandalism that's tarnished Portland's image and reputation. Research suggests it's a relatively small number of offenders responsible for a significant share of the vandalism. The challenge is catching them, sometimes red-handed. And I should add one thing, Pat. In court today, a judge said Laurent could go to Europe for two weeks as part of his career as a professional skateboarder. Okay, interesting. What else did you find in that search warrant? Well, the search warrant it really catalogs dozens of previous incidents, many of which include photos. So investigators explained they use ODOT photos and graffiti photos submitted by the public to the city's website. They look for that name or moniker Tendo. It really hasn't changed much over the years. And they were able to connect this guy to various incidents. The search warrant also described what they found in his home. And that was pretty interesting, including pads of paper um, where he allegedly worked on his graffiti. That's really common among taggers, or at least I'm told. They practice drawing on paper before they go out and spray paint a bunch of buildings. Had this guy had any run-ins with police before? Yeah, so in looking at the records, there was a vandalism case back in 2018. Police arrested him for criminal mischief. Those charges were later dropped. At the time, police say he was doing graffiti, or as he called it, art, to impress a girl. So what is, that, what is it that drives people to spray paint a building? Why do they do it? Yeah, good question. Uh, according to those who investigate this type of crime, it really is uh, an addictive behavior. Uh, they don't just tag one building and stop. It's something that goes on and on. It's repeated and actually often documented. So taggers will share images of their damage with friends or their crew. That can actually be kind of helpful to police sometimes. Yeah, I can see why. All right, thank you, Kyle. Great stuff as always.